JP Morgan and Wells Fargo are both buying Bitcoin now. Let's look at Bitcoin reactions to Fed rate cuts, the Bitcoin chart, and then close things off looking at the yield curve. First of all here, let's look at JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, two banks that are huge in the United States and are now buying Bitcoin. JP Morgan is specifically interesting because their CEO has been very outspoken about how much he does not believe in Bitcoin, how much he thinks that it is just not anything worth investing in. And yet now his bank is buying it via the ETFs. And I believe they are also issuing their own ETF going forward soon here for JP Morgan Chase. Uh, so that is quite interesting. That is how the how, how much the script has flipped on these banks right now in that relationship. So this is actually really good. This is really bullish. We're seeing more banks, more governments, more everyone wanting more Bitcoin leading to that supply shock we've been all looking forward to so much so going forward here. So that's actually, that's the good news. That's the good news. Now, the next thing I wanted to look at is how certain um, assets react to rate cuts. Now I've got IWM, which is the Russell 2000 here, Bitcoin, gold, as well as uh, treasuries. And the way I'm going to read this is, so we got all the rate cuts here every time the Fed has cut rates since 2002 listed. Okay, this here is the date that uh, where the low or high was found in that swing. This here is the percent of the move. The ones that have multiple uh, multiples listed were very volatile where they did either a quick up and then down move or a quick down and then up move. Uh, or in some cases did an up, down and all around move, which was this one here in April 2008. Uh, and then over here on the right is how many days it took to find that swing high or low. And at the bottom here, we have the average move. And then this one at the very right here is the average move minus any of the volatility. And what that, what that means is I just took the final resting place of price from that swing and factored that into this number here. So these ones that have two or three, I got rid of the first two or first one and only kept the very last move. So like in this case here for December 16th, 2008, it was only minus 17. Or in this one here that has three numbers from April 30th, 2008, I just kept the plus 33% move on that one for this one. So that was the minus volatility, the minus extra volatility. Uh, so let's take a look at IWM. And we're just gonna go over the averages real quick. So on average, including all the crazy volatility, the Russell 2000 or the IWM moves up approximately 0.24% on a rate cut. If you remove the extra volatility that is included in there, it is actually minus 0.35% on average for the Russell 2000 after a rate cut. So that's interesting to note. Uh, and sometimes when it does move up, though, it does move up pretty big, sometimes double digits. So keep that in mind. It's not all gloom and doom. Just, these are just averages and just something to keep in mind. Like if you see it go up, really quickly after a cut, there may be a drop coming in pretty soon after. So keep that in mind uh, with IWM. Let's go down to gold. I'm going to purposely skip Bitcoin for a second. I should have rearranged these differently. Let's take a look at gold now. Gold, on average, with all the volatility included, moves up an average of 7.77% when the Fed cuts rates on a swing. And it can take anywhere from you know, eight days to six months to see that move. So keep that in mind too. Sometimes it's not a quick thing. Sometimes it is a quick thing. Other times it takes you six months to see a 20% move. Uh, so keep that in mind. Or five months to go down, <laughs> down 5%, then up 17%. Or 48 days to go up 15, down seven, and back up 25%. Like it can be a wild ride sometimes, especially when there's a big, big recession in play here. Uh, and minus all the volatility, so just the final resting place of price during the swing uh, on gold is an average positive move of 11.04% after a Fed rate cut. Uh, so that is actually very interesting. Now let's look at Bitcoin. For Bitcoin, we've only got about five data points since Bitcoin hasn't been around long enough to have to see any of the rate cuts prior to 2019. So we've only got those five data points technically six if we include this one that went up and then down 58 percent of course this was due to c19 and we saw some really crazy crazy volatility on these two so i wouldn't expect to see those two again uh, <laughs> but i included them in this one despite that uh anyways because there's only five so i included all of them 
on average, Bitcoin moves up approximately 13.58% after a rate cut, minus that extra volatility on this one. And that is actually uh, up approximately 15% after a rate cut. Now, if you're holding micro strategy, it could be representative of a 30% move after a rate cut. On the Bitcoin miners, it could be anywhere between 30 to 45% move after a rate cut based on the previous movements of Bitcoin after rate cuts. Now, I think we might be looking more like something we saw in 2019 with those rate cuts because those are happening more like a, a normal cycle versus the, the 2020 cycle. But it does show that it moves much more like gold in, than it does IWMs, showing that it does move much more like a commodity versus uh, a security in relation to Fed rate cuts. And I think we saw that as well when the banks failed or started to fail in March 2023. And then we saw Bitcoin surge when those banks started failing. So that was also very interesting, showing that it was acting more like a commodity and a security in that relationship. So I think potentially rate cuts might be very helpful for Bitcoin, at least based on historical data, as well as that data in relation to gold and how it relates to gold versus something like IWM. Finally, let's take a look at the treasuries. How do the treasuries work out here when you do the Fed, the Fed rate cuts? On average, you see about a 0.95% increase in uh, TLT, which is the 20-year bonds now, 20-year treasuries, uh, which if that, was, if that was TMF, that would be three times that, so about 3%. And if you minus out some of the extra volatility, it would be up about 1.81% after like immediately or, or soon after each rate cut. And of course, if that were TMF, that'd be about 6%. So that's how the rate cuts have shaken out. All right, so now let's take a look at Bitcoin right now. So we've got a couple of things we want to look at. We want to first, this is the daily. You can see on the daily here over the weekend, we've actually kind of grinded up a little bit from the bottom there. We ground up about 1.84% to the highest high over the weekend. But let's see what the actual move to current price is about 1%. So we moved up about 1% over the weekend here. This is looking a little bit like a bear flag. But one thing that is quite interesting here, though, is if we turn off our drawings, this is the Pi Cycle top moving average down here, this red one. So notice how we moved from the top of the Pi Cycle top all the way back to the bottom of it. We've bounced off this once before. Will we bounce off of this again? I mean, we bounced off of it back here in January 2024 and just launched us all the way to the top. And we slowly ground down to the bottom once more. Will we bounce off this? When we bounce off this and we break this descending trend line, this descending channel that we're in, it's going to be quite dramatic. So keep your eyes on that. We might might just bounce off of that. Let's go look at the prior post having actually and see if we did anything similar to this. Let's have a look. So when was the last having? It was a little bit after this. It was around May. Okay, so we got nowhere near touching the top last time. But last time after the having, so after the having would have been like somewhere around here, right? This area here. So let's go like this area here, somewhere in here. Okay, somewhere in there. Is the well, I mean, it, the having happened back there, but like somewhere in this area is where we're looking for post having activity going from there until where are we at right now? We are in May, uh, so it'd be about what a month out, 30 days out, probably somewhere around here. We saw it kind of grind down towards it and then it got close but didn't quite touch it and then launched off. And then when it did touch the bottom of the pie cycle moving average down here, you can see it came down to it, stuck to it from September third until October 8th. So, so uh, you know, one month, we spent one month riding this line. And then we popped up in mid October. And then by uh, late October, we were on our way. And now is that something we're going to see this year? We're going to see this potentially because I mean, historically, we come up, we touch the top, we kind of reject off of it a little bit. And then we don't come back to the bottom of this thing. And then we just start launching. So the fact that we've come all the way back to the bottom means that we are loading the spring up strong this time around. Now, of course, we never gotten a, uh, an all time high prior to this before. So let's take a look and see a new all time high. Uh, how does this react when we do a, a new all time high, which would have been over 20,000, right? Yeah, it would have been right here in this area. Usually by the time we're doing a new all time high, we're outside of this 
already, dragging this thing up. So we're kind of in uncharted waters here. I do think we're looking at something similar to like right here than anything else from 2020. Kind of have this drag down a little bit where it went down about, let's see, what was that percent move down? That was a 12% a move about down. I mean, before coming up and, and then just never looking back. What was our move right now on Bitcoin? Let's take a look here. What was our move right now from top to bottom? I bet it was more than that, but it was more like 25% or something. 23%. So we did a 23% pullback here. And then from here, honestly, this is honestly average. Now, um, we have done nothing with the Pi Cycle top yet. So if we look at the Pi Cycle top yet, we're just coming down to the bottom of that moving average where we generally tend to bounce up and start heading back towards the top. And in this case, the top is at $82,000 right now for that other moving average average. That would be pretty amazing if we were to manage to do that pretty soon. So this is actually bullish looking. It looks good. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't dip below it. We've dipped below it before. And when we, I mean, that was all the way back here in August. So during some of the worst times of the year, which we're leading into like May and June aren't generally amazing months. So we could dip below it and stay below it for how long did that go? August 17th until October 17th. So two months, we could see ourselves under this thing for about 60 days hanging out anywhere between 60 and $52,000 for up to 60 days, which would be from now, uh, it would be mid-July by the time we start seeing this thing turn around if that were to happen. But if that were to happen, that would take us into August very, very quickly, which is also known as one of the worst months of the month, uh, August and September. And then October is also usually pretty bad. Those three months are pretty, pretty bad usually. So we're looking for either a pop up here or possibly an extended, maybe even six month period below this red line here on Bitcoin if we don't start bouncing off of this moving average right here on the pi cycle top. But top is not in. As you can see here, the top, the top, not even close to in. This cycle is not even close to done yet. We need to see this red line cross up above this green line. That's when we know. That's when we know when we get this big red dot printed at the top of the chart. That's when we know that things are uh, about getting frothy and it's about time to probably start selling the majority of our assets here. So that's what's going on with Bitcoin here. Things are looking a little bearish short term. We do have still room to go down to that $52,000 range, but we are at the very bottom of the Pi Cycle top um, indicator here. We could easily see ourselves bounce off of this here, off of that $60,000 level, and then charge all the way up to brand new all-time highs here on Bitcoin. So we're not out of the game yet, even though short term, it does look like it could be a little bearish. We are coming up on some key areas where we could see ourselves jumping up off up. To round out the video here, let's take a look at the yield curves. Now, this is a very important chart. This is a chart that should scare you. This orange line is not supposed to be above the blue line. This is a yield curve inversion. This orange line is the two-year bonds. The blue line is the 10-year bonds. When it is more effective to buy short-term debt than to buy long-term debt, um, things aren't good. And when these things uninvert, we tend to see a recession. Now, during the period of time when they are sitting above each other, like where the orange is above the blue, things, we're golden. We're doing good. We'll just keep chugging along, going up, especially with a Fed pause right now. We're, we're just going to be chilling overall in terms of the overall stock market. Things start getting a little volatile, though, when this orange line crosses back beneath this blue line. And eventually it has to. Eventually it's, it's got to do that. So we've been watching this thing very closely. At least I have. We've been inverted since this move right here, which was July 7th, 2022. That is how long we've been inverted. We've been in inverted since early July, 2022. We are coming up on two years of inversion here. Now, some people are speculating that that means we're going to have a horrific recession. Uh, other people are saying it's going to be a normal recession. Some people still believe in the soft landing. I'm not sure what I believe in yet, but I'll start forming that opinion when we start seeing how high the unemployment rates start to get when things start getting dicey, uh, as well as how quickly the Fed starts cutting rates. That's going to be our key, uh, uh, our knowledge, you know, that's going to be the key towards knowing how bad the recession is going to be. It's going to be how fast they cut those rates. Because if you remember in 2020, they cut them to zero in a matter of weeks. And that sent us absolutely diving before rising. Um, so if they can do uh, like a really slow methodical cut, I think we're probably going to be okay, have a softer recession. But if they start cutting by like half or half a percent or 1% uh, at, at each meeting, then, then I think we're having some, we're, we're going to be in trouble for a while here. And it's time to buckle your seatbelts on that one.
Uh, so anyways, that's all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a profitable day.